an extraordinary story about a young man who many years ago visited Prague. What he found there were thousands of refugees. Hi everybody, it's Chris Kandai here and I'm at the London Film Festival. This is the red carpet gala premiere of the film One Life, featuring the incredible Sir Anthony Hopkins. This film tells the story of Sir Nicholas Winton, who organised one of the first trains to evacuate children from Czechoslovakia to the UK. It's something that's known as the Kinder Transport. And I'm so excited because one of my dear friends, John Fieldsend, is coming. He was on that train with his brother. He remembers saying goodbye to his parents through the window of the train. I remember my mother taking a photograph of my brother and I with our father and then they took us down to the local little town railway station. They put us on a train. As the train was about to leave, my mother took her wristwatch off and passed it through the window to me and simply said, this is for you to remember us by. We are working to evacuate these children by train to safety in Britain. Why are you doing this, Mr. Winton? Because I may be able to do something about it. I must. I really want you to see this film. It's incredibly well made. I met so many people that knew Sir Nicholas personally, and they were just astounded by the likeness that Anthony Hopkins brought to that role. When I watched it last night, I was surrounded by the ancestors of those who were on the kinder transport. I met their sons and daughters. I met their grandchildren. And there was a, a really important moment at the end of the film. The director came onto the stage and he asked if there's anyone in the room who is alive today because of Nicholas Winton, could you please stand? And all the people around me stood, including John Fieldsend, who was on that train himself. And you could just feel the audience just recognizing the significance. The title of the film, One Life, Save One Life, Save the World, Nicholas Winton didn't just save 669 lives. There are over 6,000 people today that are alive because of his actions. I understood only really when the children, now adults, stood up. Yeah. And then you thought that person yeah. was there because he made an effort to do something yeah. back then. For me as a campaigner, as somebody who's passionate as you are in helping refugees and vulnerable people, it gave me great hope that what we do today will have generational impact. We're not just helping people from Ukraine and Afghanistan and Syria and Palestine. We can help generations of people into the future. My hope for the film is that it will help us to be sympathetic to people who are fleeing for safety, who are the victims of persecution, war and horrible things, and that a better understanding of what they've been through should make us in this country more sympathetic to them and more welcoming. These are not invaders, these are not the enemy. These are people, some of whom would like to find safety in this country, and why shouldn't we offer that safety? Look at the people we have here today. Look what they contribute to our society. I think we need to be far more generous, far more open-minded, and see the possibility of those new people in our workplace, in our schools, and in our societies. Really. Every one person to make a difference, you don't need to wait for someone else to organize, you see something needs to be done, step in and do it. That was Nicky Winter. You have a lot of faith in ordinary people. Because I'm an ordinary person. Can I ask, is there anyone in the audience tonight who owes their life to Nicholas Winton? Can you imagine what it's like to have to flee your home, your family and friends and seek safety and sanctuary elsewhere? That's the experience of 43 million children who've had to leave their homes because of war, terror or famine. I believe that art can help people connect and empathise with that experience so those of us who've never had to lose those things can help other people get the support and welcome that they need. The No Place Like Home art competition is your chance to be part of changing those minds and hearts. We'd love to see your artwork or your poetry. So if you've got pencils or pens or paintbrushes or crayons or charcoal or even a graphic design program, 
we'd love to see your pieces of art. Or maybe you're better with words. We'd love to see your short poems help people connect with the experiences of refugee children around the world. Refugee and displaced children face very different circumstances. Some have been living in refugee camps since they were born. Others have been forced to flee their homes as teenagers. I came to the UK as a refugee two years ago. I am grateful for the support I've had from my new school friends. But I really miss my friends and family in Ukraine. I hope that one day it will be safe for me to go home. I can't even imagine what that is like as I have lived in this refugee camp in Kenya since the day I was born. My favorite part of day is drinking tea at bedtime. It reminds me of my home in Afghanistan. When I'm older, I want to help build a world where children like me don't have to flee their homes to find somewhere safe to live. We're delighted to be working with the British Library and our panel of celebrity and expert judges to find the best piece of artwork in the United Kingdom. And that will be proudly displayed in the British Library during National Refugee Week. You can help change the minds and hearts of our nation and maybe even the rest of the world. So please enter it. We're looking forward to thousands of entries from across the United Kingdom. So good luck and I look forward to seeing what you produce. Young people are doing brilliant things everywhere these days. They're making history on the football pitch, at the Olympics and on the tennis courts. They're starring in blockbuster movies and storming the music industry. They're speaking up about the environment, about period poverty, about the impact of vaping and the injustices facing refugees, about the climate emergency, about the right to education and so much more. Young people are doing brilliant things all over social media, using their influence fearlessly and outrageously. I love this revival of youth power. But sadly, their voice is not being heard in politics, and I believe that needs to change. It's time to reverse that cycle and allow young people to be heard. Unfortunately, politicians aren't getting younger, they're getting older. This means that policies are moving further and further away from the interests of young people. We need to change that and make sure that young people are involved in our political system. And then our politicians have to sit up and pay attention and listen to what young people want. With a surge in youth voting, you can shift the political attention onto the issues you care about. Maybe you'll use your vote as an act of protest. Maybe you'll use your vote as an act of celebration. Maybe you'll use your vote because you're upset that your grandparents have to wait so long to get a medical appointment. Maybe you'll use your vote because you're concerned that your school's concrete is crumbling around you. Maybe you'll use your vote because you're worried you won't be able to afford to rent or buy a house. Maybe you'll use your vote to speak up about issues of the environment or how refugees are treated. Whatever you're going to use your vote for, I am certain that you're going to do it to make the world a kinder and fairer place. And in order to get started on that, you need to register. And so on the 16th of April, me and a few friends are putting on a special live event at six form colleges around the UK. We better talk you through the process of registering to be a voter. You need to know your national insurance number before you come, but then if you're allowed to bring your phone into school on the 16th of April, you'll be able to register to vote. We think if thousands of young people do that on the same day, that will send ripples throughout our political system. Our politicians will have to sit up and take notice. They'll have to stop talking at you and start listening to you. So we'd love for you to join us on the 16th of April. Let's get as many of you registering to vote as we can and let's change the way the politics works in our country so it'll be a fairer and juster place for all of us. See you soon. Good morning, everybody. My name is 
Krish Kandaya. I am the leader of the Sanctuary Foundation, and you have just joined the GiveNX live voter registration event. We're so pleased you're here. We think we're making history today. We don't think anyone's done anything quite like this before. Now, I'm in England, but I want to introduce you to my friend Laura, who is in Scotland. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. Hello, my name is Laura Young and I'm up in Scotland. I am a university student and I'm passionate about all things environmental. And as you saw in that video in the clip, that is something that's very relevant to politics and to what we're talking about today. Well, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you really care about. And we can do that using a very special tool called Mentimeter. And uh, you'll need to get your phone out and point it at the QR code, and uh, then we can hear from you. So while you're doing that, Laura, you are Scotland's Young Influencer of the Year. How did that happen? And uh, wh why did you think you needed to speak up about the environment? Well, if I'm honest, when I realised my passions for environmental issues, I wasn't sure if anyone would listen to me. But a few years ago, I started to raise my voice, speak to people around me and take to social media to share about what I was passionate about. Because I believed that if I didn't speak up, if nobody spoke up, nothing would change. And I'm excited to say that, you know, I've got, you know, a big community of people now, thousands of followers online, all talking about this issue, which, you know, it is just fantastic. You do an amazing job. I think you've got over 60,000 followers, but I'm one of them and cheering you on. Great to see so many people joining online. That's it. Give us a heart once you're in the room and let's ask the first question. So this is anonymous. We're not going to know where you are, uh, but just put a pin on the map so we know roughly where people are based today. And here we go. This will this will test out my geography as a geographer. We're seeing lots of people popping in the south of England. We've got people about halfway up. Oh, we've got people in the islands in Scotland. Hello, we've got people oh, all the way across. Oh, look at this filling up. Absolutely fantastic. Excellent. London's doing pretty good. Greetings to everybody that's here. I'm so glad we've got someone in the, the islands of Scotland. Oh, we've got people in Ireland. Someone is in the North Sea. That is fantastic. Hope you're okay on that little boat out there. Brilliant. Thanks for and joining And I think in. this is exciting to see because, you know, today is National Voter Registration Day. And obviously this whole event is about getting young people to register to vote. And that is across the UK. So it's exciting to see all these potential new voters from all the length and breadth of the nation. Okay, next question. Um, we want you to give us an emoji for how you feel about how this country is being run. Do you think it's being run brilliantly? We'll give us a smiley face if you're not so sure. Uh, maybe, oh, look, there's quite a few going for the poo emoji. Yeah. Um, I knew that was dangerous to put on there. <laughs> um, a lot of people looking quite ill about things and a few happy people out there some people definitely think maybe our prime minister's got shades on that's great and some people doing the shrug don't know don't know i think don't that's know. important yeah. to don't know great excellent thanks for joining in next question all right this is a harder one now what are the issues that you really care about we we can't list all the issues that they're out there but we'd love to know which ones really matter to you so on your phone move these around and tell us what matters. Okay, funding in schools coming first at the moment. Oh, it's been taken over by the environment. Oh, environment. Oh, yeah. Housing affordable. affordable. Housing is a huge one. That's huge. great. Uh, oh, oh, this is exciting. I wonder what's going to be the end of this list when people have stopped. Stopping war. That's great. Well done. Making housing is, is the number one right now. That's fascinating. I'm glad some of you care about refugees. That's good to hear. Schools have done an amazing job of welcoming refugees. So we're grateful for what you've done. Great. OK, well done. It's pretty quick fire. So we're just going to ask a couple more questions. Here's the next one. Do you think your vote can actually make a difference? Let's see what you have to say. Oh, they're getting oh, closer and closer. 50-50 nearly, isn't it? All right. Well, today we are here to convince you that your vote can make a difference. But wow, a lot of you really don't think it can. Um, all right. How about this question? Have you already decided uh, which way you'll go? Oh, no, not this one. Here we go. That's right. Do you think that politicians take your concerns seriously? Let's hear from oh, you. Oh, dear. That's already jumped quite heavy on the no. Yeah. Well, we, we have an opportunity to talk to politicians. So we'll raise this with them that young people across the UK today don't feel they're being listened to. 
Excellent. Okay, last question. Have you already decided who you will vote for or how you will vote, which party you're going to support in the next election? Or are you a floating voter? You haven't quite decided yet. I yeah, think this is fascinating, Laura, yeah. because it sounds like young people don't think the politicians care about them, but they haven't decided who to vote for. So if some of the parties decide to listen in to young people, they could have a big influence. Wonderful. Thank you to everybody that took part there. That was brilliant. And uh, we'll compare your results with those for the other events we're doing at 11 and 2. Brilliant. We've never done that before. So I'm quite excited that worked. Thanks for taking part, everyone. Now, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Mete Koban. He is the leader of My Life, My Say. And he has been doing an amazing job with National Voter Registration Day. I was in the, uh, what was it called now? At the, the Outerverse yesterday near Tottenham Court Road. You had a takeover there with massive signs. It looked fantastic. Mete, can you help everyone watching know what they actually need to do to vote? In fact, we can sign people up right now, can't we? We can take them through the process. Do you want, do you want to guide us through if people want to actually register? What do they need to do right now? Yeah, firstly, happy National Vote Registration Day to everyone. And thank you, Chris and the team for, for making uh, today happen. Uh, today is a really important day because as it stands, more than 4.3 million young people are currently missing from the electoral roll, meaning that they'll be excluded from voting for important elections like the local elections. So you get to vote for your local councillors, your local mayors, uh, but also in the run up to the general election uh, as well. And voting is so important because uh, you it's not just about, you know, the sense of having a feeling but it also helps you with your credit rating so whether you want to get a mobile phone contract or whether you're looking to get a home or get a job to get verified as a form of identification it helps you in so many different ways which is why it's really important that we register vote. but more importantly it's so that politicians could take your generation more seriously i saw the the result to to that question where you feel like whether politicians listen to you the sad reality is is that a lot of them tend to go after people who they know are going to vote. And that's why it's really important that we register on a mass so that they make sure that they do policies uh, for your generation and that you benefit as we move forward to the future. So um, what we're going to do is take you through a step guide on how to register to vote. Very simple, uh, not too complicated. On the screen, you should see a QR code uh, that will appear. So you simply pull out your phone um, and you go on the QR code. Uh, as you go on the QR code, it will take you to the government website. Uh, you would see a, a, a sort of register to vote. It told you the deadline uh, for the 2nd of May election is today, which is why we're hosting National Vote Registration Day today. It takes five minutes at the tops. So if you scroll down, you'll see a green button uh, that says uh, start now. Um, you click on start now. Um, as you go through uh, the start now option, um, you will see a script on the screen. It will tell you lots of different uh, information. So it'll ask you where you live. Uh, so you simply select uh, the, the country that you live in. So if you live in uh, England, in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, uh, once you uh, click on that, it will take you to the next page where it asks you about your nationality. <clears throat> um, you can still vote uh, in, in local elections uh, if you are from another nationality. So don't let that question uh, put you off. So just select which option uh, goes for you. Uh, once you click continue, it lasts you for your date of birth. Um, so you simply enter your date of birth uh, on that option. So I've just done mine now as we're doing it together. Then we continue and then it asks you some basic information uh, a bit about uh, yourself. So for example, your first name, including any middle names. Uh, once you've completed that, you click continue. Uh, and then it will ask you, uh, have you ever changed your name? Uh, you, if you haven't, then you press no. If you prefer not to say, you don't have to declare that. Uh, you move forward um, and then once you click on that, this is the crucial bit. It'll ask you for your national insurance number. Uh, if you don't have your national insurance number, it's not the end of the world. There is an option which says you can't provide your national insur insurance number, which means that um, you can still complete the application online. Um, and once you complete it, you will then have to take your national insurance number uh, to your local uh, authority, your local council, as you move forward uh, there. Um, or, you know, alternatively, if you want to wait till after uh, to get your national insurance number, you can also do it today. The deadline today is at 23.59 at midnight. Uh, it's so important, as I say to you, that you register to vote. 
there is also another uh, complication uh, with, around the, uh, the the sort of the the upcoming elections, which is that you need ID, um, and I'll talk to you a bit about uh, that too specifically. So once you've clicked your and you entered your address, um, it should be relatively straightforward for you to move forward. Uh, it'll ask you uh, further questions. Uh, I'm sure you're all following uh, the step guide around that. Um, and then let's get to the end. So put, you put your postcode in and your address. And then once you've done that, then it will, it should ask you to conclude. Um, it will also ask you whether you want to apply for a postal vote. This is really important because sometimes what happens is, is that we may not necessarily know what's going to happen on election day. You may have, you know, urgent meetings come up or you may have to travel somewhere with your family or you may have to move away. And I think it's really important that you register for a postal vote. It's really important to say that even if you register for a postal vote and you and you decide in the end that you want to go to the polling station because you like the feeling of going out to the uh, polling station and, and performing your civic duty, you can still do that. So registering for a postal vote doesn't exclude you from actually going to the polling uh, station. Yeah. What, you will, what you will simply do is the, the ballot papers that you receive uh, via the post, you fill it in, you hold it with you, you take it to the polling station, and when you take it to the polling station with forget of your ID, you are able to submit it there as well. But what the benefit of registering for a postal vote just enables you to make sure that uh, in the circumstance that, for example, you know, you may have something urgent come up and you're not able to be there, you're able to sort of, you know, be like, actually, I'm not going to be able to go, so I'll just send it off via post. There are also other options available too. Uh, there are also a proxy vote um, is, and there is a deadline for that. So, for example, if you haven't registered for a postal vote, or you haven't um, and you can't go to the polling station you could fill out a link uh, there's a link called proxy votes so if you google um saying apply for a postal vote uh, proxy vote which is p-r-o-x-y then you can get someone to go and vote on your behalf so you can get your parent to go and do that or family friend yeah. uh, whoever yeah. that may be as well fantastic thank you Mate. it's really helpful you talked us through hopefully hundreds and hundreds of people around the uk have done that and we are seeing a spike at the electoral commission's uh, data right now thanks for all you've been doing now we've got some special guests uh, joining us from crawley uh, hello holy trinity school in crawley welcome to you uh, good morning to vishal give us a wave vishal and ty and louisa excellent mm -hmm. and um hey just just tell us what you um what you study what you're doing at the moment what year are you in and what you're studying Yep, so I'm Ty, I'm a year 13 currently, and I'm studying biology, chemistry, and maths. I'm Vishal, I'm studying biology, chemistry, and photography. Um, I'm Louisa, I'm year 13, and I'm studying English, psychology, and acting. Wow, we're very impressed. I studied chemistry, so I think I've got that in common with at least two of you, which is fantastic. Now, you've got some questions, and um, let's, let's put our panellists up. I think that's me... Uh, Sharon's stuck on a train but may make it, which is great. And uh, Mete and uh, let's see if we can get Laura up as well. And then you fire the questions and we'll do our best to answer them. Who's going first? So, in your opinion, what are the biggest barriers to voting and how can we ensure there's equal access to the ballot? Furthermore, do you feel like we're doing enough to establish equal access? Wow, I think that's a Mete question. What, you want to answer that one? How do we get equal access established, Mete? That's a passion of yours. That's a great question. And I think, you know, one of the biggest barriers uh, that we have for people participating in democracy is the fact that none of us really at school uh, learn about politics. We, know, we don't learn about what is the society that we live in? How do you engage? Um, I'm, I'm a councillor, for example. How do you engage with a councillor? What does a councillor do? What does an MP do? Um, what, is it, what is a vote? You know, why, why do we vote? You know, how... How, how do we then hold our politicians accountable? All of these important questions that we need to be able to, to utilise, uh, we don't learn about it. So that is a huge barrier. Education is a massive barrier. Right. The second key thing is as well is, um, it's a great question, is, is that, you know, people like me or Laura or others on this call, uh, the reality is politics isn't representative. Uh, so it still tends to be old older white uh, men who are in politics. And we need to encourage more young people, uh, more women, more people of colour, uh, to politics so it actually starts to look feel uh, like society so i think those are really important things and i think when we do that we can get that equal access that you that you very much sort of advocate for vishal great question and this event is trying to put that right actually we're trying to make sure that every young person in the country knows that they can use their vote now 
hot news. I think Sharon is here. Can we put her on screen? Welcome, Sharon. Oh, I'm really hoping this is going to work. Hey, Sharon. Hey. Nice to see you. I know you've had travel problems today. Uh, but Sharon, some of our viewers might recognize you from Love Island. What is someone from Love Island doing talking about voting and democracy? Why does this matter to you? Yeah, it's um, probably quite a weird transition for majority of people, but people that don't know, actually, pre-Love Island, I spent six and a half years working in central government. Um, my love for politics actually began probably when I was about 13. Um, I come from a mixed heritage background, a first and second generation immigrant, so I've seen how politics really shaped their lives and their country and what was missing for young people. And I wanted to be a part of something that could really drive change and coming out of Love Island you know you're throwing things left right and centre but none of them really aligned with me as a person and didn't really have any longevity for the future of Britain and its young people so I kind of didn't steer too far away from politics and now I've ended up on your screens. Amazing we're so grateful you made it and I know it's been a tough day for you already and we love your passion for fighting for the rights of women and girls and we're really inspired by that so thank you. Uh, Louisa, wh why don't you ask your question now and one of our panellists will answer it for you. I don't think how we focus can assess the reliability and bias of certain political parties considering the vast variety of sources that are created and what strategies you would recommend for voters in order to navigate through these biases to make the most fully informed decision possible. Wow. Okay, who wants to take that? I'm going to ask Laura or Sharon. Do you want to, How do we overcome the biases that people are being thrown? Sure, I can jump in first and then I'm sure Sharon will, will have some extra bits. I mean, I think certainly when it comes to, you know, reliability and accountability of information, one of the great things we have is direct access to a lot of people who are running to be our politicians. You can find them online. You can see what they're saying directly on whether it's their Twitter or X pages. You can actually see what they are saying directly. And that's really helpful to know what does this politician really think about the local issues or the national issues that are important? But also one thing I would recommend, read lots of different news sources, you know, read lots of different types of papers and, um, you know, ones on the left, ones on the right, you know, watch different clips, listen to different podcasts, follow different people on social media because it's helpful to give you a well-rounded view of things and it helps you really shape that out. But Sharon, I'm sure you've got more stuff on this. Yeah, I actually would definitely echo that. We're seeing a rise in AI, AI technology being used, um, not always positively when it comes to politics. And we've seen some imitation videos of politicians saying certain things. But if you do your research and not take the first thing you see as gospel, that would really help you um, form your opinion. And actually, a lot of politicians have been quite welcoming when I've gone to them as a constituent or as somebody with an issue when it comes to talking about violence against women and girls. So if you have a particular issue that you want to talk about, I definitely would suggest reaching out to them. They have to respond to you. Fantastic. Okay. Um, last question is, I think, Ty, it's your question, isn't it? So the lack of transparency within some parties may have led to some internal divisions, change of parties, as well as broken promises. Due to this, what do you say we do as a voter if we cannot fully trust or associate with any of the parties? Wow, that's a huge question. What do you do if you can't trust or fully associate with any of the parties? Well, we saw, didn't we, in that list of things that young people care about, um, a whole variety, actually, didn't we? And I don't think there's any one party that's going to fix all of them. So in, in my opinion, you've got to work out well, what issues really matter to you and then look at the party that best represents them. And then if none of the parties represent them, I think that's when we've got to use our voices to speak up for them. Uh, I work with refugees. Laura works um, helping to change people's minds about the environment. Um, and Sharon is, is passionate about the rights of women and girls. We try to use our voice to persuade government, uh, whoever's in power, to play their part. And so I, I think we've just got to vote out of the, the, the best that we can see. No party is going to fully match all of your views. But which ones match the ones that you care about the most? That's where I think you've got to go. Friends, we have run out of time and the bell's going to ring and everyone's going to have to move to different places. Can I say a huge thank you to our three uh, guests, Vishal, Tai, and Louisa from Holy Trinity Crawley. Thank you to Mete for guiding us through the process. Thank you for Laura for being a fantastic host. And thank you to Sharon for being here as well. And look, if you did register to vote today, congratulations. You started a journey of 
political involvement. We believe your voice matters. We want to see a fairer, juster, more compassionate world. We believe that everybody has that right. And so thank you for taking an important step today. We look forward to seeing you in our political life and uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. God bless you.